Welcome back, Agron fans, to the final series of round two of the Agron 2013 Christmas Tournament. This is Shadow 3 bringing you the last match. I probably should have announced who I was earlier. I am me. Actually, that's a little bit tautological. But... Anyway, next match is Chitin versus Aragant. That is going to be fairly interesting. Aragant, as you can see, was the one who defeated me and put me into the loser's bracket. And... I'm curious to see how he deals with Kitan, because Kitan is a very powerful player. He's been around since beta, and he has been consistently a powerful player throughout. So, Aragant, however, is fairly new, and is going to be up against something... Well, it could be interesting. I mean, he was definitely practicing a lot, so I'm curious to see what he does. His style is very octo-heavy, kind of octopod-heavy, once it gets into it. But anyway, let's just start the game and see what happens. So once again, we are on Tomb of Heroes. Chitin at the west side of the map. Aragant, the east side. Aragant is going for CISO. Never mind. Apparently, Aragant has completely changed his species. Chitin is going for Grekum. Seriously, didn't, did I get these backwards? No, Aragant, red. Chitin, blue. Okay, well, yeah. So Aragant going for CISO and Chitin over Grekum. I actually am not sure exactly what Chitin... I think Chitin, Chitin has always played Grekum, so that's not unusual. But... Or generally played Grekum. But Aragon, on the other hand, was playing Grekum. Must have switched over to CISO. Figured that was a better species for him. His style with Grekum is very Octo and Octopod heavy, so I don't know if he's going to go for the analogous style with CISO, which I guess would be infantry and heavy tanks or Twin Mars. I guess heavy tanks more than anything. But I doubt that. He's probably just going to go for... Actually, no, wait. No, apparently he actually is... But looks like he's planning on going for that analogous strategy. Also going for a bit of a SimCity here. If you notice, the importers are positioned just so that Grekum units cannot get... Or Octos, I should say, cannot get in while infantry can still attack across them. Marines at least can attack across them. Special Ops can't. They have a line of sight weapon. But Marines have a lob weapon. So they can get just past those importers. Well, the Marine Special Ops going forward and it looks like... I'm guessing an armory. There we go. There's the armory being built up. So a nice little Sim base here. Actually, it's a really nice one. Nice little cross going. It's actually... That'll be fairly effective, assuming that Chitin goes for a quick rush. However, that's not to be. An Octopod is, in fact, what's going on. Just a quick Octo Rush. Which, on a map like Tomb of Heroes, is not especially likely. Octopods are much more likely to come up, since that's something you can afford to spend the time to get. And it's generally worth it, since it defends so well against the more powerful rushes that would come up in a map like this. So, Aragon has the right idea against Grekum, but unfortunately may not be the right situation for it. Also, infantry do have a hard time dealing with Octopods. They can deal with them in large enough numbers, like 8 to 12 Marines could deal with an Octopod fairly effectively, but not a Marine in a Special Op. And I don't know how much Aragon is planning on building. Like I say, just... Well, they will be getting that armory within the next 10 seconds, and jumping forward about 3 minutes from where he was... And seeing that there is an Octopod up and nothing else, Chitin is not going for Octos, not like Aragon. Aragon would go for early Octos there, Chitin does not. Very important distinction. And apparently Aragon did not expect it, though admittedly against Grekum, this isn't a terrible idea, a way to set up your base. I just think he... well, I'm curious to see what he does. I'm thinking he's planning an infantry rush. I could see if he had enough infantry that could work out, but the Octopod is already hit at the... Like, it's hitting at about the 2-minute mark. Chitin's point of view, the Octo was hit. Actually, 3-minute mark, sorry. So Aragon is about a minute down from there. And he can start getting infantry right now. He really needs to, in fact. He needs to as soon as he gets the armory up. In fact, it almost would have been a better idea to build up the armory before the third importer. I build to another importer, an armory, and then a third importer. And then from there, and the armory in front, because the importers have hardly any health. 300 health versus 800. So build the armory here, and then build the importers around that. And wisely avoiding the sim base, there's really no point trying to worry about that because an Octopod isn't going to be deterred by that. Actually, that's not true. The Octopod will be deterred by that. However, the Octopod will hit the arm importer before the Marine has a chance to get anywhere near it. So still a good idea to get out of there. There's really no point to staying in there. And Octos are being built up for Chitin, probably for resource processors. Yes, exclusively for resource processors. Now, unfortunately for Aragon, his forces are not really well arranged to deal with the Octopod. They aren't hierarchy together. Or they are hierarchy together, but even then, they aren't together. That's the important part. They have to be together. Although, 
enough of them are taking damage, and that Octopus actually is taking quite a bit, targeting the Special Op and not the Marines for... Okay, so I apparently stand corrected. It's not eight infantry you need, it's four. Although, admittedly, the Octopod was staying still. It wasn't trying to kite them out. If Kitan does go for that kiting strategy, however, which he might be, still has time, it could be more effective, but... Apparently, yeah, all you need is four. Although, Special Ops are a bit of a difference, because the thing is, the Akron unit targeting AI will target the Medic first. It'll automatically shoot at healers. So, Special Ops will take the damage instead of the Marines. The Marines deal a lot more damage than Special Ops, and Special Ops have 100 health versus the Marines' 70. Well, okay, there's no Marines to show, but Marines have 70 health. There we go. Marine, 70. So, that means that they operate as a really effective tank force. And there we go. Exactly like I predicted, a infantry strategy. Infantry heavy attack, and Chitin... I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone back to try to fix up the Octopod. I mean, he might be trying to change it as it gets close to the unplayable pass. That's the only thing I can think of. He might try to attack from the south rather than attacking from the east just to give Aragon no time to counter. Not a bad idea. However that would still be kind of tricky to work with. Looks like Kitan really isn't too worried about that. He is... Actually... No, never mind! What am I saying? I, I called it exactly right! Kitan's going for exactly that strategy, and he already did that. However, Aragon able to react to this in time. I was expecting it would happen a bit close to the Impelable Past Edge, but probably Kitan didn't quite expect the time wave coming in there. Still, Kitan actually has time to cancel out this and do something else. So he could once again go back to what he was doing before, just undo those orders. I don't think he's going to do that, though. I really don't. Looks like he's much more focused on economy, much more focused on late game. Getting another Octopod out, and Aragon is actually... Oh, actually, he's in much worse position this time. In fact, looks like the orders from before are getting in the way. He's probably going to try to undo them. But, no, even with that, it's the Octopod is still able to get in and take care of these Special Ops. And, ultimately, the Marines will be coming in, the Special Ops will be coming in, but... Not before they, the ones in front die, and at this point, I don't think there's enough tanking for the Marines to actually deal the damage they need to get rid of the Octopod. It'll be close. But no, the Octopod getting out of view, the targeting going away, and Aragon moving in to attack, but even with that, the Special Ops is taking a lot of damage. The Marine finally getting into range to deal with this. Kind of tough to stop call at this point. I think the Marines will be able to win, but it's a matter of how close they get, and it looks like, yes, the Marines are able to win out, but this is a much more effective attack than it was before. So this Octopod still goes down. Chitin's feint does not change much. Looks like ultimately retreating with the Octopod, kiting away the infantry, and trying to avoid any attacks. Ultimately trying to avoid a great deal of problems. And it looks like that Octopod will survive. Or maybe not. In fact, that... Nope, everyone's going to survive. He just jumped back slightly. Double checking. The Octopod will, will live and will get rid of the infantry with pretty much impunity. If it gets back to heal, that would be wonderful for Kitan. Now, Kitan, at this point of view, the 430 mark has reefs, has healing. Probably going to get advanced structures fairly soon. Normally, it's gotten around the 6-minute mark when players are going for more economic strategy. So it's very close to that timing. And Aragon just double-checking this attack here, or this defense. Doesn't have the chronology to send back. Forces to really deal with the Octopod. He's going to try. It looks like he's going to try to intercept. And, no, the Marine getting into range of the Octopod, but only able to get one hit off. So Aragon losing one more unit, and this is pretty big. Listen, Octopods, you have to deal with them with clumped up infantry. They all have to be together to deal with the Octopod, because otherwise everything's going to just get killed one in a row. One at a time, in a row, they're all going to die. And the Octopod will live and get away, as it's doing right now. The second Octopod being built, and I expect advanced structures to come up any second now. I mean, there's Q-Plasma, enough Q-Plasma to support Pharopods. And enough LC to support pretty much anything else on top of that. Expansion on top of that if he needs to, which he probably will. Or want to, at least. And more Autobots coming in. It looks like that's actually more where Chitin is focused, rather than focusing on advanced structures. So the first Autobot will be healed up right away. In the range of one of the reefs. Now in the range of two of them. That'll speed things up a bit. At the same time, or rather, a minute down from here, Aragon getting up ground units to get himself more powerful marines. I should point out, this is very important because he has a lot of special ops in his army. Ground units only upgrades marines and mechs. It does not upgrade special ops. Only marines and mechs. This is very important because right now, as it stands, well, there's a marine coming in. But with the army that Aragon currently has, ground units is of no benefit. It does not upgrade special ops. And, of course, four, five octopods. This is going to... Okay, one octopod. One Octopod isn't too much for 
half a dozen infantry to deal with. Six octopods with Faro and, and Seppi support? Well, mostly the six octopods. Who cares about the Faro and Seppi? Faro and Seppi don't matter. They're fodder. Six oct or five octopods. That will win it. That will just take it out. That, that'll be what will do this game in. I think Aragon has... I think Aragon has lost this game. I might be wrong, but I see no factories up. I see four infantry, most of which are not upgraded by ground units, and nothing else. In fact, no infantry production. I'm a bit surprised Aragon hasn't been constantly producing infantry from the armory. Like, just bind that armory to a control group and just go back and hit your infantry production hockeys. Because that's really important to do. But it doesn't really matter, apparently. For Aragon, he doesn't care so much. He is scouting out. He will see the octopods, or at least an octopod. A couple octopods. Now, Kitan, on the other hand, has already moved out. Getting rid of the forces that were scouting around here from Aragon and moving his octopods out. It's just a matter of time at this point. Aragon, see, he's not building up more defenses. He doesn't have a lot of chronergy at this point to actually build up defenses. Unfortunately, I think with infantry is that you need... This is really where the macro in the present mo mantra that I keep harping on is extremely important. If you macro in the present, you can actually get all the infantry you need out. Because the thing is, you need to set a lot of build orders to get those infantry out. And when your chrono energy is quite low, or rather you're spending a lot of it per action as you do right here, two and a half minutes below the present, well, it's very difficult to build up a large army. As we can see, Aragon's trying to do what he can to do so. It's still kind of late though, that's the thing. I mean, five octopods is not going to go down to a dozen infantry. Like, three or four dozen, yes! Actually, possibly even two dozen. The, they multiply pretty quickly when you consider that they have lob weapons. They have to worry about line of sight. Octopods, however, also have... No, octopods have line of sight weapons. They don't have lob weapons, so they have a bit more to worry about when it comes to targeting. And actually, you know what? There's quite a lot of imagery coming up. Aragon is actually getting close to that mark about two... Well, I think, I think two dozen would do it against five octopods. Now, Chitin... There we go. He's moving in for the attack, or moving closer to the attack. Probably going to target it a bit closer to the impalable past edge when that comes up. And he is also expanding from here as well, so he has backup. I mean, if this attack fails, he could just fly in. He has advanced charges. He has Faros coming in. He has Aspire coming in. He could easily come in with Farpods, Sepipods. And really, the Octopods will do damage. They'll do a lot of damage. And even if those infantry win, a lot of them will die. Possibly the importers as well will die. Resource processors will almost definitely die. And that will be very difficult for Aragon to deal with. Now, Aragon, from his point of view, has, looks like, about 16 infantry, most of which are marines. So he has gone for the right choice in terms of what to build. But that being said, Chitin is obviously just waiting for the right time, at which point he'll just go share for the attack. Getting Sephipods up, that will be very useful when, or if the Octopods fail. They probably won't, but in case they do, the Sephipods will come in very nicely. And Firebots as well on top of that would be useful as well. Not for the Cloak, mind you, just for the sheer firepower. The Cloak is useless against Special Ops, they detection. And at this point, now would be basically the perfect time to attack. Kitan is not going for the attack quite yet. He has a Bookmark, however. It looks like Bookmark 1 is probably when he's planning on going for that attack. He's jumped back to it, and he has not set it yet. There we go. Now he's going to set, now he's going to attack. He's on Bookmark 1, and as close as possible to the UPP Edge... Okay, apparently Bookmark 2 was a backup, and there it goes! Attacking right near the Unplayable Past Edge. Now, Aragon at this point does have the Chrono Energy to deal with this. He can go back, he can deal with this. A factory issue is being built a bit later, too. But he's jumping back, seeing what's going on, and his infantry is way out of position. He might be going for a straight attack, and a Sepipod coming in to try to intercept the infantry as well. It's not going to deal a whole lot of damage, but the Octopods are doing what they need to do. Getting rid of the resource processors, soon to get rid of everything else, and the Marines coming in... Like I said, the city pods aren't doing a whole lot of damage. I mean, relative to the amount of damage they'd be taking. But the Octopods, that's where the real story is. Taking care of all of Aragon's base. So Aragon is just out of this fight. He has lost this... He's not quite lost this game yet. It really will be a question of dealing with the infantry. Because right now, Aragon has a lot of Marines in the field. And Marines are constructors. Given that, the Marines can rebuild. However, Aragon has lost his main base. His entire main base. His imports are all down. His army's down. Everything's down. Even from his point of view, it's going down, and the infantry he has, he could rebuild. He has a lot of money in the bank. 540 LC, 224 QP, no reason to throw in the towel quite yet. He could easily spread his infantry out and just rebuild across the entire map and start just pumping out everything and keeping Chitin 
searching. Admittedly, Kain has area in it, so he won't be searching for long, but it's still something that Kain will have to worry about. I mean, one Marine could get out of this battle group. It wouldn't be a big difference for the battle group, but it would allow it to rebuild while attacking, while distracting Kitan with his attack. That would be a useful thing to do. Not necessarily a perfect thing to do, but he goes in, builds a couple factories, uses those to, uses those to build up... Well, I guess ATHCs would be the best bet. A lot of them. I mean, importers, you need two. I suppose what he could do is get mechs and then build... Macrofab and then build some frigates and twin Mars. He already has ground units, so twin Mars would actually be... Trivial. There's no tech cost to it. Just build the Mars. Doesn't look like that's his plan, though. He's just going straight for an attack, trying to deal with Kitan's base. And Kitan has another half dozen Octobots in his main base, ready to deal with this. Right, that's not going to matter. The Sepipod is taking a fair amount of damage, but not that much, actually. So... Actually, I don't know if the Sepipod would take all that much damage. No, it's mostly dodging the attacks. The attacks are missing it. And then, at this point... Aragon really doesn't have a whole lot. He is proxying a factory, but that's not what I meant. What I meant was going off, building RPs, building importers with one or two marines, get him out of the battle group, and just send him off building elsewhere while you distract him. Admittedly, this isn't a distraction for five octopods, especially when they can't even see the octopods. And Aragon has thrown in the towel. That is game as expected, pretty much. So I will be back with Ma game two. Possibly the last game of tonight. We'll see if Aragon wins. We'll go into game three. Otherwise, that will be it for tonight. So stay tuned for game two of Chitin versus Aragon in the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. Welcome back, Akron fans, to game two of Chitin vs. Aragont in the Akron 23 Christmas turn. I am Shadow 33 and we are playing this match on, or we're watching this match being played on Cataclysm Ridge. Back to this map. Interestingly, same as Shalka and Cybernetic Pony. Though, admittedly, the Tomb of Heroes match was considerably shorter. A mercy on my throat. However, Cataclysm Ridge is a map known for pretty short games. Kitan going for Grekum. Aragont is probably also going for Seesaw once again. I doubt he's going to change himself up too much. Actually, he hasn't even gone past tick zero of the game yet, so we'll see what he's up to when he actually unpauses. I don't know if he's plan trying to pick a species now, or what exactly he's planning on doing. By the way, just in case you're wondering, if you pick your species before the species selectors are properly assigned on tick zero like that, it won't actually have an effect. It'll, it cancels the order. I I dealt with that already. But, Grekum. Aragon is going for Grekum instead, not CISO. I guess he might be more comfortable with Grekum overall. So, Grekum mirror matchup. This is going to be probably a heavy Octo Octopod matchup. I'm a little surprised Aragon did not go immediately for QP RP. Chitin didn't either. Chitin, however, is going for a quick L second LCRP, third LCRP, or, well, rather, fifth LCRP. And Aragon is going for. Well, it's hard to say. He hasn't actually built up beyond the first second or so. Aragon, or sorry, Kitan, on the other hand, is about a minute and 20 seconds into the game and is clearly focused on an economic, or at least semi-economic strategy. He is getting... He's not going for a hard rush, at any rate. That has been more or less ruled out. Depends on what he changes when he goes back and probably changes what he's building up, but Aragon has... Whoa. Okay, Aragon's going for the south. And he's standing up... As, well, okay, this, these are standing up to begin with. But he's going, putting his RPs to the south, and he is going for a very quick proxy center of the map with the Faro and Seppi. And surprisingly not moving the Arcticus, actually. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't just decided to pull the Arcticus out of the way, put it in the north somewhere, and make Kitan totally confused when he goes into Aragon's main base and sees absolutely nothing in there. Though I'm sure Kitan probably is wise enough to pick up on the fact that Aragon is likely not just not in the game. <laughs> he's probably... I mean, if you see that, if you're, if you're going playing an RTS game and you go into your base and your opponent can move their buildings and their buildings aren't there, you know something's up. So, Grekum can move their buildings, Grekum can make something seem up. However, Titan can still scout it out. I mean, this is not... Akron being Akron, you can still see things going on before your opponent's actions have actually propagated to your time. So, Titan will be able to see what's going on before the green time wave. I think the green time wave carries it over. So, Titan can still see what's going on. He knows that... Aragon is playing Grekum, which he'd be able to infer anyway if he didn't see anything. And it looks like... Oh, Aragon apparently is having some weirdness with his RPs. 
Oh, I see. He thinks that there's a bug with them stopping and starting. No, it's not a bug. RPs, actually, Grecum resource processors use fuel in order to move. The fuel gauge here, it starts, I think, about 25 or so. And it recharges once every, I think, five seconds. And so if it's not charged, you can't move. It's one fuel to move one tile. And as you can see, the tiles are not that big. So it takes a lot of fuel to get along. These RPs are not intended to be moved. The starting RPs are not intended to be moved a long distance. They're meant to be moved to your nearest crates. If you want to expand like this, you really have got to go with Octos. And this is actually true for Vecure as well. Vecure RPs only have enough energy for one skip teleport. So they can only skip teleport once, and it takes 25 energy to recharge, but I think it takes about a total of 75 seconds or so. So you're almost a minute and a half waiting for the next skip. And the maps are designed in order to make sure this happens. And of course, CISO just has the walk time. So in all cases, not, no species can really move an RP that far away from their starting position at the very start of the game. However, Aragon still had a fair amount of resources from the start. He does have an Octo being built up, but he doesn't have the resources to turn them into a resource processor, and unfortunately his fly command started in quite a ways earlier. But yeah, it's a bit of an obscure feature since Grecum RPs, as you can see in this case, don't have a whole lot of fuel, but Grecum RPs at the very start of the game do not need a lot of fuel because they only need to go to their starting crate. So they only have enough fuel to get to the starting crate, which is about 20 at the very most. Actually, I think it's more like 10. So there is, there's nothing unintended about that. There's no bug about that. It's just Grecum RPs can't move that far. Vecchio RPs can't move that far. Cecil RPs take a while to move in the first place. So no species can have their RPs get very far away. At this point, I'd say Kitan basically has the game. Unfortunately, kind of due to a bit of a misunderstanding on Aragon's part about a slightly obscure aspect of the game mechanics. Basically, the, the balance, essentially. I mean, Aragon still managing to get Oh, I see. He managed to get them on the ground. Getting some our, getting some resources finally at the 358 mark. Getting some Octos as well, but at this point, I mean, Kitan, just to point out, about a minute down from there, has an Octobot, has Octos, has a couple Reefs. There is no concern. I've, I'm really kind of, I feel kind of bad about this, actually, for Aragon's sake. And they're talking about restarting it. They really should have, I think. I mean, I suppose, yes, it is up to the player to understand the mechanics that are presented to them. But, at the same time, that is kind of a sucky way to lose. And really, if you think about it, Aragon, he probably he was planning something clearly fairly clever. But, I mean, you think about it, I didn't even point that out that the RPs were going to run out of fuel halfway through. And that's, you'd expect I would know this stuff, and yeah, it's that obscure. Like, it just never comes up. RPs very rarely move far enough to run out of fuel for Grecum. Because they're usually octos before they end up even getting close to the crates. And by the time they need to move, they have 250 fuel because they've been spending all this time harvesting the crate. By the time the crate's done, they have enough fuel to pretty much go anywhere around the map in one go. They don't have to worry about stopping to refuel, they just go. I imagine there will be some balance discussions on the forum as a result of this because it's something that no one really thinks about and then eventually... I mean, I'm a bit surprised that none came up earlier since this game was played about two weeks ago. But I wouldn't be surprised if after this cast there was, just because it's kind of brought to light a bit. I think it's not a bad idea. It might be worth making it a bit more clear that it really is relied on for movement. But this is actually a really rare thing to come up. It almost never comes up that RPs do that. I mean, on the other hand, one thing to point out is this is game two and Aragon did lose game one. Going for crazy strategies like this when you've lost game one is typically a bad idea. It's usually a good idea to go for the very safe stock, economy-focused late-game or mid-to-late-game strategies when you have lost the first match, just to try to make sure you get in. Your opponent will probably go for something a bit crazy, so you want to defend against that, and then go to game three, and in game three, then you have a more even match. However, Aragon is going straight for Octo Rush, and at the same time, Kitan, or rather, Minute Down, Kitan is attacking directly with Octobots and Octos of his own, and his Octos actually got, one of them got surrounded pretty quickly. That Octo looks like it's being held back a bit. Kitan not going for the attack quite yet. Or rather, going for the attack all at once so that Octo does not get surrounded like it did last time. And these Octos are evenly matched, but the Octopod support is going to make the difference. And that is going to be Kitan's game, most likely. Yeah, Aragon does have some RPs coming in here, but there's nothing to build RPs with. I mean, he's clearly going for quick 
if he had just build RPs here, it would have been okay. But my guess is what he was planning on doing was getting RPs out of his main base in order to make sure that Kaiden would have to spend a bit more time if he was scouting around to try to find the RPs to kill the RPs when the RPs were defenseless. So he put them out of the way in order to make sure that the RPs were not actually going to get attacked and put them out of the way of the likely rush path, which is the north. But still make sure the Arctic was there. The one thing about the Arctic being there is that if Kaiden attacks but doesn't pay attention to it, you'll see damage going up, so you'll assume that he's dealing damage to the RPs, and then you'll look back and realize it's the Arcticus, but hopefully it'll be too late by that point. Now, I kind of realize an inattention, but at the same time going for this proxy, not a bad idea, but the problem is that the game does not support this. Frankly, I have no problem with the game not supporting this. So, hope you enjoy that. I apologize for that last match being a little bit iffy, as it were. But that is the s round two. That is round two. So, God and Monkey will be fighting round three, as well as Cybernetic Point versus Kitan. The next set of matches, however, will be the losers round one. Aragont and Vermine, Shalka and Jericho and Shardon and Electro, and myself versus Haiku. We'll be seeing that sometime next week. Not anytime recently. They, I, they haven't all been played yet, and actually, I have... I'm going to be doing some a big day of zero K casts tomorrow, if you're interested. But for now, that is all the matches for tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everybody.